If you're living with diabetes, you probably think about your blood sugar multiple times each day. Of course, if you're diabetic or even pre-diabetic, it's extremely important to monitor your glucose levels before and after each meal. But sometimes it's your immune system, your environment, or even your stress which can cause a sudden spike in your blood sugar. So you're probably wondering, what can you do to bring your blood sugar down? and quickly. Don't go anywhere. We're about to share eight of the most effective tips to help you regulate your blood sugar safely, but rapidly. We'll let you in on the best habits to burn off glucose, and we'll reveal the foods and nutrients you need to better regulate your insulin response. We'll also unveil some amazingly simple techniques that can completely transform your health. But before we jump in, please do us a quick favor by liking and subscribing. Plus, stick around to find out how you can get two free gifts. And now, let's uncover how to bring blood sugar down quickly. Eight amazing tips revealed. When you experience a spike in blood sugar, basically, that means your body is overloaded with glucose. Medical professionals call this condition hyperglycemia. Over time, chronic hyperglycemia can damage your nerves, your eyes, and your limbs. But you can fight back against chronically high blood sugar levels. So, in order to counteract those negative effects and complications, what steps should you be taking right now? Let's find out. Tip number eight, get active. In general, sticking to a normal exercise routine over time can help you to lose weight and lessen your insulin resistance. But what happens inside your body while you exercise and directly afterwards? The answer is, it depends. The American Diabetes Association recommends getting 30 to 45 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise each day. These body movements include jogging, cycling, swimming, and even dancing. Aerobic routines work large muscle groups for an extended period of time under a moderate intensity. Your muscle cells will utilize the glucose already floating through your bloodstream to sustain their energy. And thus, you'll most likely find that your blood sugar has dropped directly following your routine. On the other hand, if you're purely looking to bring glucose levels down after your workout, you may want to avoid anaerobic or high-intensity exercises. These types of routines include weightlifting, high-intensity interval training, and short burst sprints. That means you could still technically find yourself participating in anaerobic exercise even while jogging, swimming, or cycling, if you push yourself to perform at a high intensity. Moving your muscles in this more extreme manner triggers your body to release stored glucose from your liver into your bloodstream so it can be fed to your muscle cells. Therefore, anaerobic movements could actually end up raising your post-exercise blood sugar levels. But if you're just hoping to avoid a blood sugar spike directly after a big meal, there's a simple form of exercise which can work wonders. Take a walk. Recent research has shown that just 20 minutes of moderate to brisk walking after a meal is not only beneficial for lowering plasma glucose levels, but it may achieve better results than pre-meal exercise. In fact, a study conducted by the University of Otago in New Zealand found that type 2 diabetic participants who took simple 10-minute post-meal walks averaged glucose levels that were 12% lower than participants who took a single 30-minute walk during the day. So, while all forms of exercise can aid your long-term fasting glucose levels, if you're looking to bring your blood sugar down quickly after a workout, stick to aerobic routines. And to better manage your post-meal glucose, go for a short, refreshing walk after you help out with the dishes. Tip number seven, go to bed. If you're already dealing with diabetes, you may have found sleeping to be a bit tricky. Your diagnosis might come with symptoms like hot flashes, multiple trips to the bathroom per hour, and even restlessness throughout the night. Unfortunately, a lack of sleep can also be a factor for elevated glucose levels. A 2013 study analyzing over 700,000 adults found that sleeping less than seven hours per night increases both hypertension and the risk of hyperglycemia. 
and a separate study found that participants who got less than six hours of sleep per night were twice as likely to have increased insulin resistance. Research now suggests that staying up late can force your body to produce excess cortisol, a hormone which suppresses insulin. Studies have shown that elevated cortisol levels can worsen blood sugar regulation. Other studies have shown that disrupting your biological clock, especially by being awake late into the night, can lead to increased insulin resistance. But if you find yourself struggling to get quality sleep, there are a few tricks experts now suggest. First, it's important to give yourself at least a few hours without eating before you go to bed. Many people report feelings of discomfort and difficulty falling asleep when eating food close to bedtime. And while you should drink water throughout the day, drinking caffeine close to bedtime can also make it difficult to fall asleep. Most doctors and nutritionists recommend consuming the last of your day's caffeine at least six hours before your normal bedtime. Also, try to avoid daytime naps, especially after 3 p.m. And while it's important to move your body during the day, it's best to avoid heavy exercise within three hours of your bedtime. But getting quality sleep tonight can help you avoid a blood sugar spike tomorrow. Tip number six, eat low GI. By now, you're probably aware that low glycemic index foods are classified as carbohydrate containing foods, which won't cause a fast or high increase in your blood sugar. Of course, high GI foods can be easy to detect. They're typically loaded with refined sugars and are rich in carbohydrates. That means you should be wary of white breads, french fries, cereals, candies, and packaged snack foods, like potato chips and crackers. These types of foods are typically very low in fiber and will flood your bloodstream with excessive quantities of sugar in short order. On the other end of the spectrum, Studies show that regularly eating low GI foods can significantly reduce fasting glucose levels over time. But when it comes to quickly reducing your glucose levels, foods low on the glycemic index can help you achieve this goal as well. Lean meats, seafood, and other fatty foods, like avocados, are typically low GI, as they contain practically no carb content. But their high protein content has been shown to aid your body in slowing the digestion of other carbohydrates you eat. This means that certain fatty foods can actually work wonders to keep your post-meal glucose levels in check. Plus, most low GI foods, like cruciferous veggies, whole fruits, and even barley, will supply a great amount of dietary fiber. Like protein, fiber helps your body slow your digestion and thus will stretch the time it takes for sugar to become introduced to your bloodstream. That's a main reason why eating a meal with a good amount of low glycemic index, high fiber ingredients, can work to keep your post-meal glucose levels in a safe range. Tip number five, try berberine. Berberine is a natural compound found in various plants, and it's been a main feature of Ayurvedic and traditional Chinese medicine for years. While this herb has been largely ignored by Western medicine, there have been recent studies suggesting that berberine has a powerful effect on blood sugar levels. Trials published in the National Library of Medicine found that type 2 diabetic participants who consumed 600 to 2700 milligrams of berberine daily lowered fasting and long-term blood sugar levels by up to 20%. Studies also noted that the herb works effectively in conjunction with common blood sugar medications. But interestingly, other research also revealed that berberine may be as effective for lowering blood sugar as traditional pharmaceuticals, like metformin. Separate animal trials now suggest that berberine may create several beneficial effects for type 2 diabetics, including increased insulin sensitivity, improved insulin production, reduced liver glucose production, and berberine may also help to slow carbohydrate absorption. So, can you consume Ayurvedic herbs like berberine safely as a diabetic? While the herb appears to be safe and can help to lower your blood sugar quickly, it's still important to watch your dosage. There are also reports of berberine intake causing certain side effects, such as stomach pain. So, speak to your healthcare provider before adding this supplement to your diet. The top four tips are just ahead. But first, are you ready for your two free gifts? 
Discover a world of positive nutrition to help you fight diabetes within our ebook, Superfoods for Diabetics. Plus, get exclusive insights from some of the world's leading medical and nutritional professionals by watching episode one of that diabetes documentary. Both gifts can be grabbed simply by clicking the link in the description below. And now, let's explore. Tip number four, relax. Stress can come in many forms. Injuries, infections, illnesses, anxiety, or even depression can put stress on your body, which may lead to a state of chronic inflammation. And all told, chronic inflammation and stress can lead to increased insulin resistance. Studies show that the human body reacts to stress by releasing glucose from the liver, and the stress hormones adrenaline, glucagon, and cortisol are also produced. As previously mentioned, these hormones can cause body tissues to become less sensitive to insulin. That's one reason why chronically high levels of cortisol and other stress hormones have been linked to increased blood sugar levels. But when we're stressed, we also tend to subconsciously make poor food choices. So instead of calmly taking your time to cook a low-carb, fiber-rich meal, you may opt for a quick trip through the drive-thru. And how often have you found yourself grabbing a high sugar snack, like a candy bar or ice cream, during a time of stress? But here's a simple solution to combat stress and quickly reduce your glucose levels. Relax and meditate. Various studies have revealed that practices like yoga, mindfulness, and meditation can reduce your stress levels, and thus can help your body to better balance your blood sugar. In fact, a recent study found that participants who meditated regularly for six months had reduced blood sugar levels, improved insulin levels, and they reported an overall better quality of life. A separate study showed that people who regularly practiced mindfulness and meditation were 35% more likely to have healthy blood sugar levels than those who didn't meditate. So, if you've been feeling particularly agitated or restless, perhaps it's time to get a little R&R. &R. Utilize meditation techniques today to help keep your blood sugar levels balanced tomorrow and beyond. Tip number three, consume chromium and magnesium. Minerals are essential for our health, and some can have a dramatic impact on our blood sugar. Chromium, often found in vegetables and grass-fed meat, influences hormones and insulin sensitivity. Magnesium, found in leafy greens, nuts, and seeds, has been shown to reduce inflammation and decrease blood pressure. And both chromium and magnesium can play a role in lowering fasting glucose levels. Studies suggest that chromium can improve the effectiveness of insulin, and recent human trials have shown that chromium supplements have the ability to decrease insulin levels while improving blood sugar metabolism for type 2 diabetics. On the flip side, research has revealed that having chronically low chromium levels can actually raise the risk of developing diabetes. In fact, it's been reported that type 2 diabetics, on average, have lower levels of chromium than non-diabetics. Meanwhile, magnesium deficiency is also linked to insulin resistance, as diabetics tend to shed excess magnesium through their urine. That's why, as is the case with chromium, statistics show that diabetics are more likely to be deficient in magnesium than non-diabetics. Magnesium, like chromium, can work to better regulate the action of insulin, and research shows that it can aid your body in improving the uptake of glucose from your bloodstream. An American Diabetes Association study found that magnesium supplements helped reduce fasting blood glucose for participants with a magnesium deficiency. Therefore, avoiding a magnesium deficiency by eating certain foods, like spinach, broccoli, and whole grains, or by taking magnesium supplements, can work to improve your glycemic control. However, it is important to note that there are several types of magnesium supplements on the market, and they may affect your insulin sensitivity to varying degrees. So it's essential that you first see a doctor to determine which supplements and their dosages may be right for you. If you'd like to avoid supplementation, you can always add more chromium and magnesium to your diet via leafy greens, legumes, whole grains, nuts and seeds, and grass-fed meats. Tip number two, stay hydrated. 
By now, you're probably aware that a main symptom of insulin resistance is an increased frequency of bathroom visits. Since the body is trying to get rid of excess glucose, it flushes it out through urine. Of course, this means that type 1, type 2, and prediabetics can become easily dehydrated, and studies show that dehydration can cause a rise in glucose levels. So what's a simple solution to reverse dehydration and lower your blood glucose levels? Just drink more water. Experts recommend that diabetics drink between 9 to 12 glasses, or about 3 liters of water per day. Drinking water throughout the day can help to lower your glucose levels by diluting the sugar in your bloodstream. Plus, staying hydrated aids your body in flushing excess sugar from your system. A 2011 study gave different amounts of water to two groups of pre-diabetic participants. The results showed that those who drank more water had lower blood glucose levels than the participants who drank less water. Plus, water can help you avoid blood sugar spikes by keeping you away from your cupboard. It's been reported that upwards of 37% of people often mistake hunger for thirst, and instead of reaching for a high sugar treat, they should simply be grabbing a glass of water. In fact, recent studies have shown that drinking a glass of water directly before a meal can dramatically reduce your appetite. Downing just a little water especially with or before your meal, can fill you up quicker and may help you quell potentially unhealthy food cravings and in-between meal snacking. Therefore, staying hydrated can play a vital role in helping you avoid blood sugar spikes. Tip number one, up your fiber. By now, you probably know that fiber helps to lower blood sugar, but how does it work exactly? Fiber is a form of starch that can be found in plant foods. But unlike other carbohydrates, which are turned into glucose inside our bodies rapidly, fiber passes through the digestive system almost untouched, and fiber, on its own, does not require the release of insulin. Fiber comes in two main forms. Insoluble fiber, which is found in legumes and vegetables, and soluble fiber, commonly present in whole grain foods, like oats or lentils. However, most fiber-rich foods contain a combination of both forms in varying degrees. While insoluble fiber cleanses and supports the digestive tract, soluble fiber slows down digestion and nourishes the bacteria in the gut. But in the end, both forms of fiber can help your body to lower your blood sugar. An Oxford Academy animal study showed that cows who ate two fiber-rich meals per day were able to stabilize their post-meal blood glucose quicker than cows who were fed their normal diet. But what does that mean for humans? Well, various human trials have shown that eating more fiber reduces calorie intake, increases the feeling of fullness, and slows down the absorption of nutrients. Therefore, eating a fiber-rich diet can be just about the best way to reduce the chance of a post-meal blood sugar spike, and it will also be immensely beneficial for lowering fasting glucose levels. Oh, and by the way, fiber also helps flush bad LDL cholesterol out of your body. So, if your glucose levels are high, and if you want to improve your cardiovascular health, try adding some extra fiber-rich foods to your next meal. And now, we want to hear from you. Have you tried any of the tips we covered? What works for you? Share your experiences with the Diabetes Smarts community in the comment section below. We're Diabetes Smarts, and it's our mission to bring you the best tips and tricks to help you fight obesity and diabetes. So make sure to subscribe to our channel. Oh, and don't forget to claim both of your free gifts by clicking the link below. Thanks for watching. We hope you're having a diabetes fighting day.